All right, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to take a closer look at a barrel from one of my old match rifles. The barrel is a 14 and a half inch super match lightweight barrel from JP Enterprises. It has a 223 wild chamber, one to eight twist with button rifling, mid length gas, and it's made from 416R stainless steel. The barrel originally came paired with a match JP enhanced bolt made from 9310 steel. However, I'll be using a different bolt than the original that the barrel came with, since the original bolt is pretty well cooked and it can barely pass a field gauge. The barrel itself was manufactured in November of 2016, but I purchased the barrel in August of 2018. Most of its use came between September 2018 and September 2020, which is when I replaced this barrel with a Criterion. While I've used this barrel occasionally since 2020, its heavy use was during that two year period, and I haven't shot it a whole lot since. I used this barrel to compete in about 25 multi gun and black rifle matches, and the majority of rounds were shot during training sessions, which varied in pace a bit, but I never shot the barrel full auto or in a way I call abusive. That said, I didn't baby it either. The only time I gave it a break during training was when the handguard got too hot for me to hold on to. In terms of maintenance, the barrel wasn't exactly meticulously cared for. I would clean out the chamber from time to time, but I only scrubbed the bore about twice during the two times it served, my, served as my main barrel. I didn't keep a super accurate round count on the barrel, but I estimated it to be close to around 10,000 rounds. But during the time I shot it, it was a great barrel. It was always very accurate. It was gassed well and didn't give me a whole lot to complain about. The only big issue I had with the barrel was the profile. The barrel is a bit more front high beauty than I would prefer. As you can see, the barrel behind the gas board is pretty skinny, and in front of the gas board, the barrel thickens up quite a bit. Next, let's take a closer look at the barrel and see how well it's holding up. Here's a look at the barrel markings, so you can see that I'm doing this on the correct barrel. First, we're going to look how well the throat is holding up with the throat erosion gauge. My new barrels will usually register on the second or third line of this gauge, and my Criterion barrel with 15,000 rounds through it registers at a 6 or a 7. And this barrel just about completely swells up the entire gauge, which shows a significant amount of throat wear. And next, we'll take a look through the bore scope. Here's a look at the throat. Normally, you would see the start of the rifling here, but the rifling at this end of the barrel is pretty much completely worn away. You can also see a pretty fair amount of fire cracking, as well as some missing barrel material. The fire cracking and voids don't seem to be as bad as my Criterion barrel, but there's a pretty significant difference in the round counts between those two barrels. And as we move farther down towards the muzzle, the rifling cleans up quite a bit and looks a lot better. And here we are at the gas port. The gas port doesn't look as bad as I would have thought for this sort of round count. So that's something. And here we are at the crown, which looks good enough to me. And the rifling at this end of the barrel looks pretty good as well. All right, that'll do it for the bore scope. And next up, we'll go over the shooting setup and then head to the range. The barrel was fit to a snug fitting upper receiver. After greasing the threads, the barrel nut was torqued to 40 foot pounds. Headspace was checked with a psionics bolt and Forrester 223 headspace gauges. The barrel closed on the no go gauge, but did not close on the 223 field gauge. The barrel was cleaned prior to this range trip. The handguard is free floated. No muzzle device is used to prevent possible interference. A three inch bag rider is used to fit the front rest. Short screws were used with the bag rider to avoid contacting the barrel. An A5 receiver extension is installed with an A5 0 buffer with spring coat green spring. The trigger is a Geisley two stage super dynamic three gun trigger. 10 rounds were fired prior to shooting the first group to foul the bore and zero the scope. The scope is a Vortex Viper 6.5 to 20 by 44. Scope ring torque was confirmed at 15 inch pounds. Magnification is set at 20 and parallax is set at 100 yards. The barrel was cooled with a chamber chiller between each group. The velocity of each shot will be recorded by a chronograph, which is placed 8 yards from the muzzle to avoid the muzzle blast triggering the sensors. A Mantis X10 Elite is mounted to the front of the handguard. This is an accelerometer that will grade each shot based on how steady the rifle is at the moment of firing, and the groups will be measured by the Ballistic X app. I'll be shooting 30 shots per group to get a decent sample size and a realistic expectation of what this barrel can do in a match type setting. All groups will be fired at 100 yards, which is verified with a laser range finder. The point of aim is a small circle at the bottom of the target. The rifle is zeroed, so the point of impact is higher than the point of aim. I do this because it's harder to have a precise aiming point if I keep shooting holes in it. The rifle will be shot with a bench with a front rest and a rear bag. Wind will be monitored with a ribbon. Each group will take about four minutes to shoot and will be edited down to about 15 seconds. This first group is being shot with 55 grain PMC X-Tech. This was my first group of the day, so I wasn't exactly settled in with my shooting position, but I don't think it affected the results too much. And other than that, there really wasn't anything notable that happened during this group. The wind was pretty calm, like it usually is. The shooting didn't feel perfect, but there weren't any shots that felt particularly bad. So we'll wrap things up here and then take a closer look at the group. All right, here's a group for the 55 grain PMC X-Tech. We had an average velocity of 2865 with an SD of 37 and an ES of 127. The group size was 4.257 MOA with a mean radius of 0.924 MOA. And the group looks to be fairly well distributed without any significant outliers. But we'll take a look at a couple of shots here, uh, 18, 29, and 14. Starting with shot number 18, the velocity was on the lower end and the rifle stability score was not detected. And shot number 29, the velocity was 
below average and the stability score was pretty good. And shot number 14, the velocity was also below average and the stability score was 99.2. Next we'll take out the take a look at the velocity highs and lows. So was, the lowest velocity shot was shot number 15, which is here, and the highest velocity shot was shot number 28, which is right here. And then we'll also look at a couple of the uh, the least stable shots. So usually I like to have a stability score of 99.0 or better. Uh, so shot number 27 was 98.5, which is right here. And then the second least stable shot was shot number 22 at 98.9, which is right here. So both of those ended up pretty close to the center. So I got pretty lucky on those. All right, and to make things a little bit easier to contextualize, I broke the group down into six five shot groups. So the best five shot group was 1.6 MOA and the worst five shot groups were 3.2 MOA. And and the average five shot group size was 2.5 MOA. And I also did the same thing for 10 shot groups. I broke the 30 shot group down into three 10 shot groups and the groups range in size from 2.4 MOA to, to 4.1 MOA with an average 10 shot group size of 3.3 MOA. This next group is shot with some 69 grain hand loads. It's a 69 grain Sierra Match King bullet on top of AR comp powder with Lake City Brass and CCI number 400 primers. I loaded it on a Dillon XL 650 with a Mark 7 auto drive. Anyway, nothing too eventful with this group. None of the shots felt too bad and the wind was pretty calm. So nothing out of the ordinary. So let's go take a look at the numbers. All right, second group of the day, we have the 69 grain Sierra Match King uh, hand loads. The average velocity was 2564 with an SD of 25 with an ES of 102 and an average stability score of 99.6. The group size was 3.298 MOA with a mean radius of 0 0.778 MOA. The group looks, looks a little bit wide with some shots low and left here. So we'll take a look at a couple of these shots, number 7, 5, and 16. Unfortunately, the Mantis didn't uh, detect any of those shots, uh, 7, 5, or 16. And the velocity for 7 was a little bit ab above average, 5 was also a little bit above average, and 16 was also above average. And just because, we'll take a look at the velocity highs and lows. So the lowest velocity shot was shot with number 30, which is right here. And the highest velocity shot was shot number 23, which is up here. And the wind wasn't really blowing. It never really does on this range. So I don't think the wind had much to do with these rounds, but that's what we got. All right, and here is the same group broken down into six five shot groups. And the five shot groups range in size from 0 0.8 MOA. Uh, and then we had three groups at 2.5 MOA for an average five shot group size of 2.0 MOA. And then breaking the group down into three 10 shot groups, the best 10 shot group was 1.9 MOA and the worst 10 shot group was 2.6 MOA with an average 10 shot group size of 2.3 MOA. All right, here's the last group of the day. It is 77 grain burger OTMs, and I've used these bullets when reloading. I haven't shot the factory ammunition too much, but the bullets usually shoot really well, but they're also a little bit more expensive, so I don't shoot them all the time. Anyway, calm wind and no flyers with this group. So with that, we will check out the numbers of this group and then check out the overall results and the leaderboard. All right, here's the last group and best group of the day. The 77 grain burgers had an average velocity of 2486 with an SD of 20 and an ES of 74. The average rifle stability, stability score was 99.5. The group size came in at 3.216 MOA with a mean radius of 0 0.705 MOA. And the group looks a little bit wide. We got a couple outliers, number seven and 26. And again, the wind wasn't really blowing, so I don't think that's an issue, but we'll see what we can see here. So shot number seven had a velocity on the lower end and the stability score was 99.6. And then shot number 26 had a velocity on the higher end, which I think is the highest velocity, and a stability score of 99.3. And we'll take a look at the lowest uh, stability score, which is shot number 25, which is right here, pretty close to the center. And then also shot number 5 was a little bit lower than what I like, but that ended up over here. And I'll take a quick peek at that. The velocity highs and lows. The lowest velocity was shot number 13, which is right here. And the highest velocity shot was shot number 26, which we already saw, which is right here. And here's a group broken down into six five shot groups. The best five shot group was 1.3 MOA. And the worst five shot group was 2.4 MOA with an average five shot group size of 1.8 MOA. And here's a look at the overall performance for the JP barrel. The 77 grain burgers shot best, followed by the 69 grain hand loads. And then last was the 55 grain GMC x tac which isn't too surprising. The 77s and 69 Nines performed pretty similarly with a mean radius in the 0.7 range and then a group size in the 3.2 range. And the PMC X Tech group opened up just a little bit with a mean radius in the 0.9 MOA range and a group size of 4.2 MOA. So overall, I would consider it's not a bad showing by the JP Barrel with 10,000 rounds through it. It did a bit better than I was expecting.
expecting. And also I would say it's pretty consistent. There wasn't a huge range in uh, the difference between the three groups. If you look at the video that I did on a Criterion barrel with 15,000 rounds through it, I would say it had much more of an ammunition preference where it shot one load particularly good and some loads it did not like at all. This JP barrel doesn't seem to be as picky, but there's also a 5,000 round difference between the two barrels. But anyway, I won't be using this as a match barrel anymore, but you can still use it in certain situations, I guess. And here's a look at the leaderboard, which is based on the best 30 shot group at 100 yards as measured by mean radius. Obviously, this isn't a fair comparison for the JP barrel since it has 10,000 rounds through it, but I still think it's pretty fun to look at. And we can see that the JP barrel came in fifth. And you'll notice I do have another used barrel on here, the Criterion Core with 15,000 rounds through it. And the Criterion did quite a bit better, better with a mean radius in the 0.6 range versus the JP's 0.7. And the Criterion had a group size of 2.2 versus the JP with a group size of 3.2. Uh, but as I mentioned earlier, the Criterion seemed to be much more ammunition sensitive, at least in my opinion. But you guys can go check that video out. Let me know what you think. And that'll do it for the JP barrel for now. I do have some more videos in the works. The next video shouldn't be too terribly far behind this one. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. Also, if you found this video helpful, hit the like button. It will help others find this video and supports me in making more content. And that'll do it for now. I'll see you next time. Later.